cyber threat is one of the most serious economic and national security challenges the U.S. faces as a nation, and America's economic prosperity in the 21st century will depend on cybersecurity. This is according to the U.S. President, Barack Obama. This captures the rising threat of cyberspace to nations, their state of development notwithstanding. Nigeria in particular has the unfortunate toga as a beehive for cybercrime globally, with the long-standing 419 scams, the recent trend of website defacement, and multiple security breaches associated with the rapidly advancing e-payment landscape. In a bid to facilitate trade, cooperation and mutual security in the UK and Nigeria, the British High Commission recently funded a landmark research project geared at dimensioning the cyber threats in Nigeria. The research project was conducted by Digital Jewels Limited, the only ISO 27001 certified professional services firm in Africa, in partnership with a South African-based firm, Wolfpack Information Risk PTY. The outcome of the research project sponsored by the British High Commission is the 2014 Nigerian Cyber Threat Barometer. The 2014 Nigerian Cyber Threat Barometer contains an in-depth analysis on the state of cybersecurity across the globe, drilling down on Africa and in-depth on Nigeria. The barometer represents the informed opinion of key stakeholder communities drawn across the public and private sectors. Financial institutions, telecoms, e-payments, fast-moving consumer goods, amongst others, and seeks to take a stakeholder-centric collaborative approach to addressing cybercrime. People will, where we are today in our economy, in the cyberspace status, is probably the most important and most critical to address today because of the low level of awareness and therefore the susceptibility to, um, to, to social engineering attacks. Okay, so we felt that it was important that there should be a focus on that. Um, there's a quote that hack systems, professionals hack people. So the question is how easy is it for you to be hacked as a person? Okay, so we need to pay attention to our people and we need to develop the human firewall through training, education and awareness. Another quote that I like that say this is from an ex-hacker who now became an ethical hacker. It says that my access to these large companies depended upon the willingness of people to bypass policies and procedures that were in place for years before I compromised them successfully. So it says here that the methods that will most effectively minimize the ability of intruders to compromise information security are comprehensive user training and education. So we do need to pay attention to education, for skills, resources, to, to training, the know-how, and of course to life skill. Digital Dwells is a specialized indigenous governance, risk and compliance consulting firm with deep competences in information security. The report was recently launched in Abuja and Lagos in the month of March. In attendance at both events was a cross-section of relevant stakeholders from the government agencies to private organizations. As NIBS would like to identify strongly with this project, it's been said, and we thank you, Digital Jewels, Doni or Dunfa. We actually recognize the presence, of course, of the British High Commissioner. And we thank you, Craig. It's been a very good uh, presentation you've done. I've gone through this uh, magazine and my paper, and I find it highly insightful. It's actually a proactive measure. If you know what a barometer is, it's actually used to measure the atmospheric pressure. What that means is that you're able to identify ahead of time when changes do happen. And I think the word proactive is important. If you check that Nigeria is the African superpower, so it's right timing, and we are adopting cashless. For that reason, we feel we are vulnerable as a nation. So this project is for all of us. I endorse it as news. I want to thank everybody who is here and we say honestly, this is the first start. We should all go with it. Thank you very much.
came to um, um, talk to us in the ministry about this exercise and um, to seek our support and collaboration. And uh, on that day, everybody was excited about it. And I'm particularly privileged because I was there at the beginning and I'm here now to see it you know, come to a fruition. So please give this address a hand of applause. And I want to say that, yes, we are in support of this and um, it's been long coming. And now that it is here, we're happy that the giant of Africa is awakened, you know, eventually. So to take um, our rightful place. So I want to say a big thank you to uh, the British High Commission for uh, supporting this and um, every other person that is here today. I'm happy about it. I support it. And I believe that. Dr. Andrew Pocock, the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, gave the opening remarks at the Abuja event, which held on Tuesday, 25th March 2014, at the Protea Hotel at Sokoro. Dr. Pocock stressed the need for Nigeria to be more constructively involved, both to exploit its huge and commercial potential, and also to combat the hostile use of crime and terrorism. He quoted the Norton Research that estimates the cost of cybercrime to the global economy to be in the range of $389 billion. Dr. Pocock also mentioned that the UK government had earmarked £650 million to address cybercrime over the next four years. About cyberspace is this. Nigeria needs to be more constructively involved in it both obviously to exploit its huge commercial and educational potential, but also to combat the hostile use of cyberspace for crime and terrorism. Now we all terrorism, hostile attacks, pornography. The online security company Norton estimated that cybercrime cost the world economy $388 billion. Let me tell you what the UK has done about some of this. We have acted to uh, tackle and address these dangers. Our Foreign Secretary, William Hay, hosted in 2011 the London Cyber Conference. And the objective of that was to do two things. Firstly, to reinforce the principle of universal access to the internet. But secondly, to try and begin to establish rules of the road for cyberspace, for governments and public. Mr. Peter Carter, the British Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria, was at the Lagos launch on Thursday, 27 March 2014, which took place at the Lagos Oriental Hotel and where he gave the opening remarks. Mr. Carter stated that Nigeria has both a responsibility and necessity to show leadership in the area of cybersecurity. He pointed out that it is fundamentally about partnership between government and its agencies to ensure national security. But it is fundamentally about partnership. Partnership between government and uh, its agencies uh, to ensure national security. He emphasized the value of information sharing, educating the children who are also vulnerable to these attacks, as these will help in improving our chances in catching criminals and will make for greater confidence in our cyber networks. There is an information sharing uh, system that has been uh, established to allow government and business to exchange information about the threats uh, uh, that are out there in cyberspace. Finally, he stated that the success of the report will be measured by what happens next, how the report is used by relevant agencies. What happens next? And the success of the report will not be measured in terms of its launch this week. It will be measured in terms of what happens next. How the report is used uh, by Digital Jewels, by its partners here in Nigeria, by state agencies both at the federal and state level, and by other public sector organisations, but also crucially in the private sector to uh, enable all of these organisations to identify risks, to address them, 
and most importantly to address them collaboratively and in partnership. And the report itself is an The Director General of the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, Barrister Chris Oyemenam, gave the keynote address at the event in Abuja and stressed the importance of guarding our national assets while pointing out that this calls for a collective action from all relevant government parastatals, agencies, and anticipates that the Cyber Bill will become an act in the nearest future. Assets that are of a common good and that have particular um, uh, implications, as lawyers would say, the local standard, that if, if it has an effect or an impact on what you do daily, uh, in a way, it becomes a part of the national asset that requires some form of um, protection. And therefore, truly, it cuts across all that we do on a daily basis, whether you're using at the internet, essentially, or you depend on those who use the internet or such other uh, devices and access to such devices, information, and it cuts across whether it's my good friend who is managing the connectivity that enables us to exchange information and access, um, put bluntly, servers wherever they are, or databases wherever they are or uh, those of them who provide services for us. Essentially, if you look at the banking sector and how they have increasingly driven us in the area of e-payments and stuff like that. The keynote address was given by the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System, NIBS, Mr. Ade Shonubi. He cited cases of attacks on ATMs, with the knowledge of the public or relevant stakeholders only after the fact. He stated that NIBS records approximately 30,000 attacks every month and declared that the 2014 Cyber Barometer will help highlight certain aspects we're not aware of and identify things around that we need to be more sensitive to. So when they say ignorance is bliss, this is one area it definitely is not bliss. It was not much of an issue before. We always said uh, transactions are localized. It's a Naira. So if you steal so much Naira, it's going to be a headache for you to convert it. And therefore, we felt the threat was limited to people within Nigeria. But that's not the case anymore. We all go, we use our local cards for transactions internationally. And so the ability to convert Naira to foreign currency is there in reality. It also means it is so much easier for people outside Nigeria to attack and get value in currencies that are meaningful to them. We at NIBS get more than 30,000 attacks every month and it is increasing. And these are the ones that we know. The High Commissioner presented, he said, we lose $388 billion, um, right, to cybercrime every year. In about one week, we're going to rebase that GDP. I think that is supposed to be the new figure of the GDP of Nigeria. So globally, the equivalent of the Nigerian economy is lost to cybercrime. So that's actually, for me, food for thought. I think uh, that if the British government spends about a billion dollars over four years, that's 250 million, if Nigeria spent a concerted 5% of that amount would still make a lot of progress. So the recurring theme I heard from everybody was the need to create awareness. Okay, and this is what this um, report does. Create awareness to rise above what the media people call the national message clutter, that people have to be aware. Okay, and then there has to be a dedication. So for me, this is a report that Central Bank would hold to its heart in helping us formulate strategies policies that will help us induce changes in the payment system. Um, on behalf of the Central Bank, I say we support this and so I'll, I'll have to read this.
certain things that we need to, to work on. It's basically to say, every one of us have been hacked. It's either you know you have been hacked, and you are doing something to protect your perimeter, or you don't even know that you have been hacked. And so, which is actually a very dangerous position. Um, I would like to say that Central Bank is happy that this project has been executed successfully. We will, we will be the first beneficiary of this report. I say this because this report is coming out at a time when we are launching a nationwide cashless policy.